everyone. Welcome to From Fuller to Fullest. If this is your first time viewing, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back, fam. Uh, this is the craft cast, which you're probably getting used to seeing if you're returning viewers, because there's not been a whole lot of gardening going on in 2021. I promise to do better next year, or this year, 2022. Um, but this is my first craft cast of 2022. We're going to recap what I did during 2021. We're going to talk about some knitting goals. We're going to talk about some works in progress I have going on, but there are no finished objects uh, because all of the ones that would have been on this have been gifted for Christmas. Uh, today is January 13th. It is a Thursday. I am home and hanging out by myself. Kids are at school. Um, I will go back to work tomorrow. I've been a little bit sickly and because I work in healthcare, they want to make sure that I don't have COVID before they let me come back to work, which I don't. Thank you, Jesus. Um, anyway, now that we've talked about all of that, we'll jump right in with what I'm wearing, what I'm sipping on and get into the crafting. This is just a hot springs, Arkansas souvenir sweatshirt. We went up there for the uh, Christmas lights display, which was not as good as it's been in the past, but we had a good time. We took our daughters and uh, two of their good friends who are basically, you know, our daughters as well. We spent uh, the night and went and looked at all the Christmas stuff. We took them up to the tower, um, had a good couple days with them and came home, bought them all hot springs sweatshirts or hoodies or I think they all wanted hoodies, but I wanted just a plain sweatshirt. I've gotten really into sweatshirts lately. Um, enjoying the cold while I can because it's supposed to be in the 70s today. It's January and it's supposed to be in the 70s. Makes me sick. I really would just rather it just get cold and stay cold if it's going to do that. So, sweatshirt uh, in my Christmas mug. Yes, I still have Christmas up. My Christmas tree. One last podcast with the Christmas tree in it. Um, I'm having some spiced chai with honey. Nice and soothing. Um, we are a Christmas family. We enjoy Christmas as long as we absolutely can. Um, most families in my area will take Christmas down after Epiphany. Um, ours has been known to stay up till February. So, y'all enjoy it while it's here. I know I'm going to. Let's jump right into the, um, you know what? I'm going to change this up and I'm going to start with acquisitions. Uh, for Christmas, my dear sweet husband bought me a new ball winder. I don't have it with me, um, but I have been on the struggle bus with uh, winding yarn just into a regular little ball. Um, he got me a cake winder. So happy. I wound up a bunch of stuff just to say that I could. Um, and started a bunch of fresh new projects with that. And he also got me this book. It's Crochet Cute Critters. It is by Sarah Zimmerman. There's her picture there. You can see that. Um, and it's just a cute little book of amigurumi patterns, uh, little animals and things. Um, so I can branch out. We'll see. I'll have to get some uh, nice acrylic yarn to uh, work some of these up. I mean, let's see. Look at that cute little unicorn. Isn't that sweet? Um, so, he also got me a composter, which has nothing to do with knitting and all to do with gardening, but that was exciting. Um, got a composter, and I have already started composting it. I'm excited to have my own compost. One step closer to self-sustainability, which is our journey here um, on the From Fuller to Fullest channel. We are trying to get more and more self-sufficient and self-sustainable take at least the weight of our family off of the current food structure uh, in America that is very severely broken. So that's exciting. Now into works in progress. You have seen all but two of these before. Um, I have been working diligently on one of them that you've seen before and diligently on one of them that you haven't. Um, but these are in my Make 9. I'll discuss my Make 9 with you guys here in just a little bit. Um, 
uh, when we get into that part of the craft cast. So we'll look at all the knitting that I've got going on first. Then we'll discuss what I did in 2021. Hmm. Let's just go ahead and discuss what I finished in 2021. And then we'll jump into current works in progress and knitting goals for 2022. So I've got my handy dandy list here. In 2021, I finished seven sweaters, five blankets, two pairs of socks, one shawl, three headbands, three hats, and two pairs of fingerless mitts. That's a lot of knitting, and I did not realize that I did that much. And honestly, I'm pretty impressed with myself. I did not think I finished that much. I didn't think I was that quick of a knitter, but apparently, and given these blankets are lap blankets for preteen girls, a couple of baby blankets, kids sweaters but I mean that's still a lot of knitting for a year <clears throat> and I'm pretty proud of myself one of one of which was a design of my own making my Claudia crop um which you guys saw a couple episodes back is that blue hooded crop sweater you know I had to rip that out I had to make changes I'm pretty proud of myself for that so um that's a lot of finished objects for 2021 and I'm really excited and I feel like I'm off to a good start for 2022. So with that being said, 2022 is coming along um, and everything that I have started for this year, uh, beginning with um, my no frills will be in this collections journal. I'm uh, gonna work hard to keep a knitting journal that way I keep a more accurate um, log of what I make because that's just what I saw on my Instagram or what I knew that I had finished up right before Christmas. So I don't even have a true record that I've been keeping. So I've started a record and I'm just going to keep little pieces of the yarn that I used, write all that information up here um, so that I can at start date, finish date, all that kind of thing. And um, my daughter has one of the Polaroid cameras, the little Polaroid pictures. Um, and, uh, I will snap a picture of the finished object, um, and put it in here as well, just so I can have kind of like a, a knitting journal. I've seen a couple people do that, like Kay, uh, Crazy Sock Lady. I've seen her do that and a couple of other people. And I feel like that would be a good way to keep a record since I'm not on Ravelry, <clears throat> um, or on a platform that I can keep track of that well, uh, like that. So. This is now my new knitting journal. Works in progress. I have barely touched this one. This is the Bubble Cardigan by Stephen West. I do plan on making good progress and working on this, at least getting the front, the other front panel done. I think this is exactly where it was the last time you guys saw it. Um, but I do plan on working this out and getting this made so I can wear it this fall. I feel like it's gonna be beautiful fall colors and so fun. It's definitely out of my normal color range, but I'm excited to have a me made wardrobe. So I am looking to do more sweaters this year. Sweaters, cardigans, layers, I love layers. Um, the office I work in is fairly cold. The vent is right over the top of my desk. So there's nothing wrong with having a layer to pull on when it gets cool. That is living in my DFW Fiberfest bag from 2017, 2018, somewhere around there. Me and my aunt went and we had a really good time. So there's that work in progress. The other one you have seen is my shawlography, which is also a Stephen West pattern. And this time I'm not in the middle of a row, so I can actually show you more of what's going on. Um, I'm on the bottom border, uh, and like many other people, I've discussed this. Um, I changed the bottom border. I didn't, it wasn't really what I was wanting that last bottom border and that's the fun of knitting and um making things yourself as you can make modifications and i believe that's a real stephen west thing to do anyway because he's all about you know customization and color and having a good time so what i've done and it's kind of wadded up here on the needles but what i've decided to do um this these pretty crisscross x's here if you can see those yeah there we go um or the bottom of clue two, 
uh, clue four was a band of solid stripes across the bottom as the border. But what I've done is I have brought back in the welts that are further up here. And I'm going to do three welts, more of those crisscross X's, three more welts, and the last row of those crisscross X's and bind off with an eye cord edging and call it good. Um, now this is all bunched up on this needle. I think this is a 32 inch needle. Chowgu size. Chowgu red lace. US 4, 3.5 millimeters. Um, and I know this thing is gonna grow, it's gonna be massive. And I think I will wear it much better with the border I've decided on doing. Now let me tell you about this border and this tale of woe. So I started the border that he designed and I didn't really like the way it was going. So I ripped it back. And so after that, I'm like, well, I kind of like the stripes and I think it'd be cool to bring them all to a point and make it kind of look like feathers, right? So I tried that and somehow I was increasing by like one or two stitches every row doing that. So the band was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm like, okay, well, let's just try this for a little bit, see how we're gonna like it. And it's maybe it'll look more like a wing, kind of an asymmetrical shawl thing going on. And the bigger that got, the more I didn't like it. So I was about halfway across that shawl bind off or shawl border and ripped all of it back out, which was a task. Let me tell you, it took me about an hour and a half to rip it back. Um, and, and I landed on this. So that's what my plan is. I'm really loving it. I don't know what that ringing noise is. It stopped. Sorry if you heard that, but I'm really loving where this is going and I think I'm going to be much happier with it. Um, I have been working fairly diligently on it the last couple days because the project I really want to be working on, I'm waiting on needles to get here, uh, that I did not realize I didn't have the needles I needed for that. So when those get here, this will probably go back on hold and I will be working on my no frills, which we're going to go over to now. Um, we've discussed the colors in this a couple times. So if you want to know what colors are in this, which I love the way this is turning out. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, this is not my normal go-to as far as having this much color and this much busy, but I'm loving it. So um, if you wanna know what colors are in that, go back a couple episodes. I've told several times what colorways, what dyers and whatnot are in it. Um, it is living in my kitchen color, kitchen clutter, cow print canvas bag, which I love. Now, for my most favorite project, which I really wish I could work on, but I'm waiting on those nine inch circulars to do the sleeves, is my no frills, which I have finished the body. Let's see, can you see all that? Yes. So, this is all in fiber for the, fiber for the people yarn in the colorways burnt, saffron, and match head. And what I've done is I have faded from burnt and then here through the midsection, which you can see better on camera than you can in person. Um, I still have the burnt mohair over part of the saffron, uh, over the saffron. So there's not, it's a very subtle change. And then it goes into the match head colorway with the burnt mohair and then into match head fingering and mohair and it's not mohair it's i'm sorry sorry alpaca silk um baby sorry alpaca so i have finished the body for this i'm knitting the size extra, extra large because i want this to fit like a sweatshirt i want it to fit big and comfy and it is doing just that i did do a fit test on it i love it so much it looks like a fire um because you know the hottest part of a fire is blue. So it looks like it is fading into a fire. Um, and I'm loving it. So let me show you these. These were some of the first yarns I caked up on my new ball winder that my dear sweet husband uh, got for me. These are how they look all caked up. Well, kind of. I've got them wrapped around each other from putting them on hold. But so. This is, again, the No Frills Sweater by Petite Knit. 
in the size extra large, I believe. Yeah, extra large. Um, just want to make sure I told you right. And all it needs now is the sleeves, and it is done. And I'm so excited I'm going to get to wear it while it's cold. Hopefully. If the weather decides to stay cold. <sighs> I live in Southwest Arkansas. You never know. You can have an 80 degree day in January. Christmas was 82 degrees, y'all. Christmas, 82 degrees. Really? Anyway. So. Uh, they are expecting us to have a pretty bad... A winter storm around February which is a ways off but hopefully it'll at least get cold for a month or two so that I can wear my sweater once it's done and I plan to crank out those sleeves as soon as these needles get here that is living in my crazy craft lady bag that my aunt got for me for Christmas not last year but the year before that I love my aunt who uh, taught me my crafting uh, crafting skills and gave me the love of knitting and crochet. Time for a sip of tea. Now, last work in progress is living in my fondly referred to as Hobbit Hole Bag uh, from Lala Styles, I think. Yes. Anyway, is the newest project with the least amount of work um, that I think is probably going to be a languishing whip. It's going to be one I work on here and there. Um, earlier last year, if you, um, go back, I learned cables. And like I told you, I was really scared of cables. They're not as difficult as I thought, but, oh, sorry, my phone's ringing. Um, they're not as, um, difficult as I thought, but this pattern is cable intensive and it's got lace. So I think it's going to be a challenge, which I'm up for a challenge. I dive in head first on most things, how I am, but I have started the all of the lights pattern by Hohi Locatelli. There is floating around the internet, a machine made sweater that is pastel rainbow beautiful um it has mixed reviews on etsy you know it's it's a machine knit sweater so i mean and it's not u.s made it's not you know it's something you find on wish or sheen where you know you're just not really starting the quality of what you're getting so there's people who didn't get a really good one and there's people who are like this fits me perfect so but i really wanted a cabled sweater with that pastel rainbow and I showed this yarn to you when I got it in. Uh, it's the Diablo Wild Print from Hobby. That is this pastel rainbow. And instead of doing the white that came with this, I have decided to pair it with a Lion Brand Kobu, which is a cotton bamboo blend. And I have started this. Now, it is a very small start. So, I've started this and... Um, I'm really loving the way it's turning out so far. Let's see if I can get it up close enough where you can see. Now, that's not super true to color, but you can see it fairly well. So, this is just barely getting started, you guys, but I am loving it so far. I expect I will love it once it's finally done, but I don't expect that it will be done quickly. However, I am okay with languishing whips. I'm okay with things taking a long time. And this is why I have multiple projects on the go at a time. So when I don't have the brain space for something like this that's fairly intensive, I can work on something that's not quite as intensive. So there is that. And that is all of my current works in progress. All of it. So on to knitting plants. I have decided that I'm going to participate in the Make Nine again which I don't think I have in this. Yes, I do. I have in this journal. Yes. Okay. So I'm participate, participating in Noble Character Crafts Make 9 Mal 2022. I do have my grid here, but I will pop it in the video um, so that you can see it right here. 
and I'll go ahead and tell you what they are. So I'm going to do the bubble cardigan by Stephen West, which is already on the needles. I also want to do the granny stripe cardigan by Hannah over at Cozy Cottage Crochet. Super cute. Um, I can't wait to work on it. I have put the around every corner shawl on there because one of the things I want to learn this year is uh, in, not in Tarja, yes, in Tarja uh, color work. Um, so I want to try that. I want to learn that skill. The no frills sweater, which you have seen, I want to finish it uh, because in this, um, in this knit along whips are allowed. I want to do the Magic Carpet Throw by Hands Occupied, which is found in the uh, Disney Knitting book by Tannis Gray. Um, I want to do the Cusco's Poncho, which, again, you'll see that, but it's right here. I have a friend, a dear sweet friend, who is absolutely knitworthy, and he wants one. So, we're discussing what yarn we're going to get. We're discussing, you know, all of that kind of stuff, and I'm going to make that for him. Um... He's decided he wants Cusco because I told him we can leave the llama patch off and it'd be Potches um, because Potches is, is just like that, but without the llama on it. Uh, but he's decided he does want the llama on it, so we're going to make that happen. I want to do the Hope Shawl by Alabaster Pearl. She's Alabaster Pearl on Instagram. So cute shawl. I want to do the Beauty and the Beast sweater by Meg over at Bad Wolf Girl Sits and Knits, which is still also in the Disney um, knitting book with the Cusco's poncho and the magic carpet uh, throw blanket. And then I want to do the Batleth scarf, which is a Star Trek reference. It's a scarf that is a Batleth, a Klingon weapon. So cute. I'm excited to have that. I think it's going to be great. So I've put that also in my knitting journal. I've decided I want to keep those kinds of collections in here too. Um, and I'm excited for y'all to come along with me in 2022 to do those things. So, that's it for this craft cast. I hope to get back into bi-weekly craft cast. We'll see how that goes through the next couple months with everything that's currently going on. Um, but until next time, thanks for hanging out with me in my crafty space today. I bless you. Mm -hmm.